All righty, folks, it's time to have an adult conversation. I know a lot of us have emotions and sometimes feel like we deserve something. I also know that there's sometimes we get counsel from others that say you deserve something. Folks, these are dangerous words that really could send you on a path of just staying in the rat race. We're going to have this conversation with the one and only Mr. Brian Adamson. How you doing, buddy? I'm doing great, Big Mike. Happy to be back, man. Awesome. Thank you for being here. Thank you for your counsel last week. You were very gracious uh, to rush back uh, to make sure I was okay. Uh, so I just want to thank you again for that. That was very well received. Uh, I appreciate you. Um, but let's talk about this notion of deserve. I deserve. You deserve. Um, that that's a, Those are dangerous words, man. Man, I cringe when I hear it. It's, uh, I don't really believe I deserve anything, Mike, to be honest with you. It's deserve is such a strong word, and I think it's the the cousin of entitlement. If you're not careful, and um, so I'm I'm always very sensitive to certain. I'm a big words guy, as you know, right? So I'm right. I'm always looking at words and what do they mean, and if I really grab hold of this and 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 download it into my belief system, what does that do for me? And I think that it, it does some dangerous things when I start to believe that I deserve anything. I I believe that. You know, when you have goals and plans and outlook and vision for your life, that you have the, the, the other D word that should be used rather than deserve is discipline. Mm. Right. Yeah. And whatever I discipline myself for are those things that I receive. I don't deserve any of it. I get what I discipline for. And yes. uh, people, people, because by, by by virtue of the fact that people are soft in general, right? And many people are unwilling to discipline themselves at at the moment where we get, and we all get there, where we a little bit beat up, we, we dinked up from all the work that we're doing, and then we get a little fatigued and we want that gratification. Yeah. And all it takes is having the wrong voice in your ear telling you that you deserve something that is not time for. I mean, I, you know, one of the beauties about being old is you've got real stories. So I'll tell you about one of the, one of the worst decisions I've ever made. So I go to school, uh, I get a, I, I, I go to get my four year degree. I get my econ degree. Uh, I get a job. I get my first full-time job up to that point. I've had lots of part-time jobs. Uh, I'm an accountant of all things as my first job for 40 hour job at quantum disk drives, just to put the full story in context. I think I'm making, I want to say 28 grand a year. Mm -hmm. And I tell myself, I deserve a new car. College graduate, new job. Oh, by the way, married, married. Mm -hmm. I deserve a new car. Why am I, why am I driving around in my high school car? I deserve. So what does my idiot brain do? My idiot brain goes out and buys a $40,000 Mitsubishi 3000 GT, you know, pearl white, you know, just a monster of a car because I deserved it. Mm -hmm. Dude, the, the payment on that thing was astronomical at the time for a guy. Make, I, I had to keep, I had to have a second job to pay for the car and the insurance. For sure. That is so, I did not deserve that, at least not at that time. This is a cycle, this rat race, this consumerism. This is what Absolutely. holds people back. That stupid decision that I made wrecked. Dude, I could not have, like if I wanted a house hack or fourplex, as soon as I signed that car payment, I wasn't qualified. My debt, yeah. to, my debt to income was all blowing the hell. Yeah, I destroyed it. I destroyed my, now I wasn't looking for a fourplex. I should have been. Mm. These are just, just I have, I have dozens of stupid decisions like that. I don't deserve that. I, it wasn't the time. Yeah. Crazy. Yeah, I man, I think we'd be here all day if we trade these stories back. <laughs> um it's back to your point about getting older is the level of clarity that you get. And the reason why I thought this conversation was even so important to have today is because of the viewers that you have, right? These are people who are are committed to the process that watch this channel. And I we, I wanted to tell them beware. Beware because those that are closest to you who have little to no discipline in their lives, who have accepted whatever their life is, 
can't identify with what you're trying to do to get somewhere else. And so these people are going to normalize making poor financial decisions. They're going to normalize the fact that you need a break and should go on vacation, although it's not time yet. They're going to normalize, look, you're halfway there already. You can slack off a little bit and get back on it. They're going to normalize mediocrity. And you have to be careful of that. And you can't believe the lie just because it's being told to you. Because subconsciously, you're going to want to believe it as well. Like I remember in 2019, um, my wife and I, we didn't go on vacation from 2019 to 2022. Mm -hmm. Okay. And um, could you not, don't get me wrong. My, my business and work looks like vacation a lot of the time. Right. But I mean, in terms of like truly getting away, unplugged phone and airplane mode, we didn't do that for three years. Why? Because we had a plan of what we were trying to do in that season. And so we disciplined ourselves not to do it. Now, I probably handled that a little bit better than her, but the reality was in 2022, we went on eight vacations, right? So, so my point in saying that is once you get clear about what you're saying yes to, it becomes easier to, to say no to the things that don't align with your yes. And so um, it, just understand that there's going to be a lot of noise in this process of getting to four, right? As Mike's all, my Mike always talks about and has been talking about even more um, in recent weeks. You, you got to get to a point where you're so committed that it doesn't matter what anybody says. It doesn't matter what's presented to you. And as a matter of fact, and, and this is one thing that I wanted to just say really quick, is I want you to start getting excited when you have the money to do the thing, but you don't do it anyway. Yeah, I mean... <laughs> One of the, I take this from Dave Ramsey. I was lucky enough to see Dave Ramsey speak at Sean Connell's event. And, and my biggest takeaway from Dave Ramsey was stay on message, right? Dave Ramsey has been essentially telling the same message for 30 plus years. And that was important for me to hear because my message, do the work, get to four, the first five years suck. It's a 10 year journey. That It doesn't change. Yeah. It's just sometimes people are receptive and ready to hear it. And if you're in the suck, I want you to know it does end. Like one of the things that, that I just started doing yesterday, Sunday, is I have this amazing school community, which you're speaking uh, to tomorrow. Thank you for that. Mm -hmm. um, I started interviewing investors that are at the beginning of their journey, mm -hmm. right? A lot of my channel, a lot of the millionaires, which you're included in, um, we've been doing it 10 plus years. Sometimes we forget what it was like at the beginning. Mm -hmm. So- I did five interviews in school yesterday, 30 minutes each. They'll be published Monday through Friday at five o'clock because I think it's important to listen, to answer questions, to tell them it's going to be okay, to tell them you've been there. And then just to highlight the quality of people inside my community, right? One of the things that I do inside school is it's 20 bucks a month. It's 20 bucks a month on purpose. Mm -hmm. It's just high enough to keep the trolls away. And it's low enough that if you're serious, it's like two lattes. It's, it, it's not it's not 99 bucks a month or you know something crazy, for sure. because I want it to be for everyone. So um, I just I'm ex I'm just so excited for what we're building in that community. Yeah, yeah, it's good, man. I'm excited to to come and add my contribution tomorrow. Which everybody, please, for those that are coming, make sure you got a ton of questions. I'm an open book. I'm gonna give you guys everything that that I know that you want to know. So um, just come prepare with a bunch of questions. I'm going to talk obviously on remote investing because that's my core competency, but um, we can go anywhere you want to go in the conversation though. And I'll answer everything to my greatest ability for sure. Yeah, I know you will. I mean, obviously remote investing, but I would definitely, I would definitely poke at the mindset thing. If you haven't right. learned, you know, and again, Brian's got a, an amazing playlist on this channel. He sees the world technicolor and he can articulate it in ways that it is hard for me to fathom right his brain works at a speed that i can't comprehend so definitely poke at that a little bit the mindset and how he keeps going and how he stays balanced through all the ups and downs so i would there's so many ways that brian can help a school member uh so i hope people take advantage of that and and hopefully brian you remember to hit the record button because a lot of people will also um Watch it on replay. So hit record and get me a copy. Don't forget. I, I will hit record. As a matter of fact, I think I'm going to have my admin start the call with me so that <laughs> she will hit the record button. 
I'm gonna make a note of that as a matter because I, I may forget, honestly. I'm glad you said that. So I'm gonna have her start the call with me because she will do it. There you go. Yeah, we yeah. want to keep this recorded. We have a whole laundry list of millionaire conversations that are inside school that people can go back and watch. And I okay. want to make sure this is one because yeah. you, you'll probably have 10 to 15 people live, but you'll you'll have a hundred people watching on replay. Got it. Got it. Yeah. I do I do have a question, Mike. Yeah. Why do you think that it is? when you don't have money, right? Like I, mm -hmm. my first two cars when I was probably 19 and then another one at 22, both had co-signers because clearly I didn't have the, the financial backing, right? Just goofy stuff. Why do you think it is that we want to buy things that we can't afford, but then when we get to a point where we have the money, we're really not in a hurry to buy anything? Uh, I'm going to call it a maturity. Again, I'm not sure if that's the right word, right? When you're on the come up, and you get to that first plateau. And again, my first plateau was college graduate, married, full-time job. You want, you've been told, I, it's just consumerism. You have been told forever that you made it to some point. And our stupid brain is wired when you make it to go buy something. Uh, and then when you fast forward, you know, I don't know, 30 years, mm -hmm. you've done 15 years of sacrifice. You've You understand that, you know, discretionary income is meant to buy assets, assets to prove cash flow, cash flow that's meant to pay your bills. You just see it differently. Yeah. Right. Cash today to me is it's a, it's a tool. Yeah. 20, 30 years ago, it was meant to be spent. I think that's the big thing. My mindset went from this, this cash is meant to be spent on stuff that makes me feel good to, Hey, this is supposed to be a tool. Uh, and it's supposed to go out and make more of it, right? It's supposed to go out and bring back a, a cousin or a brother or a sister. For sure. Um, that's what I think off the top of my For head. Sure. Yeah, I, I, I agree with that. Um, I agree with that. I think you get to a point where, for me, I believe I really got to a point where I got tired of working so hard <laughs> to then spend that money on something that only had a temporary gratification associated to it. And then I had the compounded work of going to produce that money again. You, you yeah. know what I mean? And so I, I really just got exhausted with it. I'm like, I'm, I'm working way too hard for the money. The money has to work much harder than me. So I have a, uh, this is actually in my course, Get Your Money Right, but I'm going to give it to people here for free. Mm -hmm. I want I want people in this, and again, it's a whole math formula, right? But here, here we go. Let's just pretend for a moment that you make $40 an hour. I'm going to just estimate that at 80 grand a year. Mm -hmm. So what I want people 40, to do- 48 gets you 100,000. So yeah, that's right. All right. So, yeah. So you make 80 grand a year. 50, what did I say? 40 bucks an hour. Mm -hmm. What I want people to do is I want them to back out taxes, rent, food, entertainment, all of your fixed expenses car payments, student loan payments, whatever you have. At the end of the day, in this example, what we're going to say, just I got to get my calculator out so we do some real math together. So we're going to say that that, that $80,000 after everything turns into ten grand, mm -hmm. just in this example, which means you have $10,000 a year in discretionary income. Now, okay, so if we divide that by 2080, which is how many work hours you have, mm -hmm. You don't make $40 an hour. You make $4.81. Why is this mental exercise important? Well, throughout the year, you are going to have an opportunity to spend this discretionary income. Let's say, for example, that you deserve a new iPhone. Your iPhone today works. It's not broken. It's not chipped. It works. But you deserve a new iPhone. And I have no idea what an iPhone costs. Let's call it 1000 bucks. No idea. So this iPhone that you deserve, if you divide by $4.81, you have to work 208 hours to pay for that thing. If you don't know what 208 hours is, that's five freaking weeks. Right. Do you really deserve an iPhone? Are right. you going to work five weeks for that? Crazy. That's how you should think. Crazy. And so without me, and I'm so glad you articulated it the way you did, that framing is strong. Without me even knowing all of that, just internally, 
I realize that something is off about this process. I don't care how much I make when I spend it on this. I got to go work extremely hard all over. And I'm like, this is stupid. Like, no, it's got to be something better to do with this money. But exactly. This is this is the mental shift that has to happen. In this example, you make 40 bucks an hour. So most people, most people are going to go, hey, it's a thousand dollar thing. I make 40 bucks an hour. It's only it's a half a week of work. Mm -hmm. I deserve that. No, you knucklehead. You have fixed expenses that you've already committed to where 80% of your money's gone. You have $4.81 to play with. Yeah. That's yeah. all you have. Yeah. And, and you didn't even throw think... you didn't even throw a credit card payment in there, Mike. No, and I didn't. You know, and you know those are a part of the equation. Yeah, because this gets really scary. I've I've done this. I've canceled people on this. I remember one household. Uh, I think they made 125 grand a year. Their mm -hmm. discretionary or disposable income was like 6,200 bucks. So I'm just going to do the math real quick. In their example, they made combined mm -hmm. less than $3 an hour. On 125 grand a year. Yeah, because they already, they're already pot committed. They make three, no, $2 and 98 cents. $2.98, that's all they're playing with. They go to work for eight hours. They're playing with $24. My goodness. That's the mental shift you have to have. It's all yeah. about discretionary income. Yeah. That's like two combo meals at McDonald's now, from what I understand. Like, that's that's right. I mean, to go to work for eight hours and you can buy, like, McDonald's. Is yeah, your, your, your treat. That's what your life is work, worth, right? That's what your life is worth. Folks, it's all of, it's not about income. It's not even about net income. It is about how much discretionary income you have. And this is what Olivia and I went through. I only bring up stuff I've done. Yeah. We spent 100% of our income mm -hmm. before we got serious. And through month, six months, a, a year, a little over a year, we ended up spending 50%. So think about that, you know, that 126 couple. So if 50% was disposable, what would that be? 63 grand? So instead of making three dollars an hour, you know, it's thirty bucks. It's ten x. Yeah, it's it's it, that it, life is that simple. If you it's, focus on discretionary game income, game. it's game a game changer. changer. And the the bottom line is, you know, we all have our unique moments. And for me, when I came to that realization, it was game over. Like this is oh. still, I'm not doing. Like I'm not. There's no way I'm doing this with active income anymore. Exactly. And I think for most people. They just aren't fed up enough yet. Mm. You do get to a point. I call them, I call them light bulb moments where you just had enough. Yeah. You just, I'm tired. I'm not doing this anymore. You got to have that wake up moment. Yeah. And for me, it was after losing 80% of my wealth in a stock market crash. I'm like, I got to do something different. I got to, I, I got to build something that's on a much stronger foundation. I'm not in the cool kid. I didn't go to Harvard. Yeah. I, I don't know the right people. I don't know the vocabulary. I got to, I got to go do, I got to go become elite at something. And that was a buy box in Fresno, California. I was just, that was it. I was fed up. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's good. Mike. Ho hopefully this, this helps somebody today. I just sense that it's a lot of people out there that have competing voices in their ear. And maybe even some of their own, right? Of what they think they deserve based on the fact that you work hard. And it's like, they're working hard as a catalyst to it, but that doesn't classify what you deserve and what you don't. It's what you discipline yourself for. If you think about every purchase, that if I make this purchase today, will it hurt me tomorrow? And if the answer is yes to that, you don't deserve it. I don't care how you justify it. If you make the purchase today and it hurts you tomorrow, you don't deserve it. I love that. At the end of the day, folks, the wealth formula hasn't changed. You must create discretionary income. That discretionary income becomes the seeds to buy assets. And then you do that for a decade. Sorry, not sexy, not cool, not fast, but it works. Yes, Brian, sir. where can people find you? Brian Adamson official on YouTube and everywhere else. And again, I look forward to seeing you guys at in school, at school, whatever way you say it. Tomorrow, 3 p.m. Eastern. You got it, buddy. Take care of yourself. Thanks again. All right, Mike. Thanks, man.